Well, hello there, everybody. Hope you're having another lovely day in lockdown. Uh, if not, if you're not feeling too uh, bright and breezy, I've got something here that might cheer you up a little bit. Or not, it is a little bit melancholy, I suppose. Uh, this is the new release from developer Co-op. Uh, it's called Winding Worlds. Just hit Apple Arcade a couple of weeks back now, I believe. Um, follows in a similar vein to their, I think, 2017 hit, which was called Nog. Uh, we reviewed it over on PG.com very positively. Very straightforward, stylish puzzler. Uh, as I say, this is quite similar, at least in terms um, of its focus over storytelling beyond puzzling. Very much enjoying it so far. I'm quite won over by it. It is incredibly sweet. It is um, just overall super, super charming. And here is why. So first of all, the puzzling could not be simpler, honestly. Uh, everything works either by scrolling horizontally or vertically. Though despite that lack of complexity, the actual interactions that you're performing are super satisfying. Um, just visually, just in terms of the sound effects, they're compelling to complete, strangely. And super straightforward puzzles are usually something that puts me off games. Uh, here I feel that it makes sense because I suppose you don't really want roadblocks in the way of a game like this where the story beats and the characters and the, uh, the small interactions along the way are what matters as opposed to beating the game or whatever or, you know, feeling a mastery of puzzles. Uh, sure, that's fine and that works in some games. Here, I think they are just enjoyable. They don't need to be challenging, necessarily. The focus is much more on the story. So it revolves around this small, I don't know, small creature, I guess, uh, alien creature uh, by the name of Willow, who is hired by this weird snake worm uh, time and space traveler to visit this series of planets where um, characters have uh, had sort of traumatic events generally and are unsure of how to move on and Willow's job is to help them find a way to, to come to terms with what's, whatever's happened to them, whatever they've done or you know what, what, what tragedy has befallen them and working out a way to move on and better oneself. That sounds, you know, like it could be fairly saccharine and annoying. Um, I guarantee you this is not. This manages to straddle that sort of Pixar line uh, to the point where it isn't clawing, it's not talking down to kids, but at the same time it is interesting and um, resonant enough, resonant, sorry, enough to appeal to adults. And I think different points are going to appeal to kids more, some points are going to appeal more to adults, but at the end of the day, I think anybody of any age could probably get behind this and enjoy, you know, different parts of it. So this one here, this is an early level. You just see uh, Willow trying to help out. Uh, I believe it's Robert, who is the uh, windmill. And I can't remember his little friend's name, but she sort of recruited you to uh, bring Robert back because he's, he's gone off to help other little towns and help other people because she's quite lonely and she's struggling without her, her lighthouse friend, her sentient lighthouse friend. So yeah, you can see here this is the sort of thing that you're doing. I'm, I'm just swiping uh, horizontally to align those, and I was doing vertically earlier, just to get these screws in place. Very, very straightforward. Um, strangely, it does take a little while to get used to. Um, not that it's like frustrating, but I was, you know, it was taking me a while to solve things that were generally very straightforward. But yeah, I got over that very, very quickly, and as I say, very, very minor inconvenience. The planets are all very distinct in terms of their characters, in terms of their aesthetic. To the point where I was looking forward to, you know, what, what lies in wait next. It is a short game, uh, from what I can tell. I haven't actually finished it yet, but it's probably going to come in at around two to three hours, I would say. Uh, assuming you're not going to speed through it all, because uh, I like to 
sort of taken the sights. Not that there's much to do beyond just the main critical path, but just, you know, taking your time to read all the text and, and not rushing your way through it. But yeah, the puzzles don't really get that much more complex than what you're seeing here. Uh, they are different, but they do rely on that core uh, swiping or scrolling rather mechanic. But that doesn't really pose any sort of downside, I don't think. Um, works just fine. There's just enough compelling gameplay there to uh, make those puzzle interactions enjoyable and kind of string you along from conversation to conversation and from planet to planet. Yeah, and just what's what's really won me over, as I say, oh, it's obviously it's Robot who's won me over in the end, but um, what's won me over with this one is, is definitely that writing and that tricky balance that it strikes between being cloying and annoying and like genuinely engaging and uh, I don't know, just emotionally satisfying, even though these little, they're, they're almost little vignettes, they're like maybe 10 minutes each, these planets. Uh, you do get a, a full picture of that person's predicament in that time, and you do sort of get to know them, not with any, you know, huge level of depth, but to the point where you, you know, will remember that character, and you'll remember your interactions with them, and how that sort of forms Willow's own growth in a way. It is a very generally light-hearted puzzler with an element of melancholy there, but there, you know, there is, there's obviously been an incredible amount of thought behind how this has been written. It is super successful in that regard, and just because something outwardly appears to be kid-friendly or simplistic does not mean that that is actually the case in reality. I think there is a lot going on here, a lot of interesting, all of it successful so far, at least for me. It is an Apple Arcade exclusive, at least on mobile right now. Means obviously gonna have to subscribe to the service. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. Most of the games that have been coming out recently have been super, super strong. Uh, this is no exception. It is one of my favorites uh, so far of the year uh, in terms of the Apple Arcade offerings. And I just think people that will give it a chance will certainly find a lot to love and enjoy and uh, be, maybe be a bit upset over, but not for long because there's always that light at the end of it that it, you know, brings you back up and and uh, reassures you that it's all been a learning experience. You've grown by the end of it, or at least Willow has. Just super lovely. Hope you've enjoyed guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, goodbye.